Potter's Journal. It was a good year for some things in the garden, not cucumbers, although I did do some pickles, bread and butter pickles, beans, tons of these, um, a dilly bean, and a pickled bean. The process of preserving food this way, relatively modern. Um, we can get food from just about anywhere. We don't have coconut milk here where I'm from. Uh, we do have, okay, but honey, I can get that from my local farm market and uh, keep it till I need it this way. Um, spoon fruits, as they would call them in Greece. Uh, or, okay, it's sour cherry preserves. You can probably also get these from Turkey. And the San Marzanos, you know, I just don't have the Mediterranean sun or the volcanic soil to grow these right here. Um, this process relatively new. It used to be done in quite a different manner in ceramic crocks and jars. I don't fully understand the process, but I do know how to make the jars. This might be just the kind of thing to do down at the Southside Historic Village. Okay, and here we are inside the little general store. It has got everything, including the checkerboard by the window for the old man and the kids to swap stories and the potbelly stove. All the departments you'd want. We've got canned goods. But what I'm making is, okay, and here's what we use today as canning jars. Actually, fairly modern. These are relatively old. But in the pottery shop, we are going a step back further to when it was fermented in crocks. And this is the kind of thing we'll be doing. Okay, let's see what we can make in the artisan shop here today. They were exercising the horses out there. Yeah, they have the buggy class the drive. The drive.
this surprises me that not having made a canning jar for 30 years that I could make one without thinking about it probably because this is one of the items when I worked in the production shop that I did make up to maybe a hundred in a day um, and that's what um, what's her name was looking for the other day too how about a bigger truck like the one on the table yeah yeah and our historic village is on the end of a fairgrounds Okay, in the day of our village, the 1880s approximately, and even today, people like to show off, okay, their produce and their canned products. Maybe I'll make some ceramic pickling jars. Okay, at the fair, did I say I'll show you how to make the canning jar. We already saw that. Um, let's see what we can find here in the garden to put in those cans. Um, um, it was quite a different process in the uh, um, pottery jars, uh, from what I understand, involving wax sealer. So um, not, not to the modern process that we have today with the uh, jars and the seal lids. Um, but, uh, okay, let's see what we can find here in the garden at the Southside Historic Village in Hookstown, PA. And the hard thing is for me and the volunteers just to get down here and take care of it. So the idea was have it overrun with a hardy vine. Um, there is a butternut squash. And these are all resistant to the vine borer, which, um, you know, can kill them and left our garden empty one year. Um, I try to pick a lot of heirloom varieties. Here is a peach tomato. Now, I don't see the blush on them, but they do have a bit of a silver to them and sometimes a, a peachy blush. We grew a couple kind of corns here. I think uh, we've got some popcorn here that uh, Barb Rupert always tries to put in. I picked a giant. This is a blue Ohakan corn. Look at that thing. It's almost as tall as the telephone pole. Um, it's good eating fresh early in the season. Well, probably not good. Their corn wasn't as good as what we have today. But um, it's also one for grinding. The deer came and ate our beans, but I see this one did finally <laughs> make it to the trellis and it's on its way up. Um, this is a volunteer, the little cherry tomatoes. They um, found, okay, their own way in here. And let's see, we have got this giant purpley thing is okay I forget I will put it up here in the letters um, castor okay the beans are not edible but it is a giant and has great foliage color um, kind of a purpley cast to it and something did get in here and get some of the corn I am gonna try to find another squash or two okay here is the trombonica not as big as they were last year I don't think it's uh, a great squash here. And there's another one. I also have in here a kabocha, but um, since it's a historic village, we'll, it's a Japanese squash, we'll let everybody think that's a Native American name. And here we go, the okra. Let's see. Which everybody says you can't grow here in Pennsylvania. Well, yes, you can. There's also some Cinderella pumpkins in here. The uh, marigolds, another tomato, and okay, there we go. Look at those things. Let's see what we've got. We'll let this one ripen on the window seal. That is a Belgian giant, uh, sometimes called, well, it has a couple of different names. The onions also did well here, and the peppers we enjoyed in one of the meals we pulled out of the bread oven. Okay, a few flowers too, some zinnias. Okay.